Alright. This is the new SRT Viper, and this particular one is the Viper GTS. So this is the, the top of the line model. And we actually have two different models of Viper now. And somebody asked me just yesterday, I said, okay, which model do I need? And my question to them would then be, how are you gonna use your Viper? For the traditional Viper owner who liked that, that raw power, that brute force, we still have, that's the SRT Viper. Third and fourth gear. Still got that car, right? We got it, you Third bet. And fourth gear. But for the owner who wants something that they can take the wife to dinner in, who can do a weekend tour, who can truly have a grand touring car, that's what the GTS is for. Uh, 2010 was the last year of production, so we took off 11 and 12, came back for 2013 with this car. And the big reason why is because the government mandated that we put in traction control and stability management. By law, we have to have that in the car now. So to have that, we had to either rework the old car or take our time, do it right, and re-engineer. And that's really, truly what we chose to do. And that's what you've got here right now. So let's talk about the exterior of the car. Everything on the car is functional. So every scoop, every slat, every vent that you see, everything's functional. Intake in, brake ducting down there, heat extractors coming up off the hood. The heat extractor does a couple of things. Number one, it lets the air from the radiator, gets through the radiator, cools the engine better, and now has a place to go. On a solid hood, that air balls up underneath the hood can cause turbulence. So now we let that air escape, you get better cooling, you get better stability, and as the air comes along the base of the windshield, the base of the hood hits the windshield, okay. you get downforce from the car. Here, let's look under the hood here. This, is all you guys come around and you can take a look. It's all carbon fiber up underneath that entire hood is carbon fiber, and it doesn't weigh much of anything. It's a just a handful of pounds. It's really quite lightweight. It's a we don't paint engine. the underside of the carbon fiber. We just put oh, a clear wow. coat on it because half the fun of having a giant piece of carbon fiber it's is small, being able to show it off. This is a larger engine than we've had in the past. It's the oh, largest. Long, it's the largest yeah. one we've ever had. Yeah. So the hood is all carbon fiber. The roof is carbon fiber. And so is the deck lid as well. The entire trunk assembly, the hatch assembly, this is all carbon fiber as well. And you can see, you can see I mean, it's super lightweight here. Again, those two struts are putting most of the pressure on it, but it only weighs a handful of pounds. The idea is, is that from the waist up, the new Viper is all carbon fiber. It's all about dropping the weight on the car to increase its performance. That's more trunk than I got. You bet. Well, I'll give a, I'll give a lean to Colin Chapman from Lotus on this one. He always talked about adding lightness to his cars. That's exactly what we've done. We have lightened the car up. The doors used to be all made out of SMC, sheet molding compound. This is now an aluminum composite. It's actually lighter and stronger than the old SMC doors. Again, lightening up the car. When you outfit it correctly, the SRT Viper with the SRT track package on it is the lightest and most powerful Viper we've ever made, ever bar none. Uh, it's uh, 3,200 and change dry weight and 640 horsepower. It's a pretty impressive po horsepower to weight ratio. Of course, we talk about horsepower, 8.4 liter V10. It's 640 horse, 600 torque. That is the most torque of any naturally aspirated production engine ever made. So you've got all the power, You've also got the stability. The chassis is heavily revised from the old one, 50% stiffer than the last 2010 model Viper. One of the big reasons is that X-Brace. This piece would actually fit right on the American Le Mans series car. If we had it here right now, you could unbolt those eight bolts and bolt it right on the race car. It's the same mounting points. So you wonder how close the race car is. It shares a lot of the same technology. Uh, theirs is made out of carbon fiber, it weighs a little lighter, you know, but, uh, but it works out pretty well. All right, let's talk suspension. Between the SRT and the GTS, got a little bit of a difference here. The SRT is a traditional springs and shocks, not adjustable, it is what it is, it's super stiff, it's again, racetrack set up, racetrack ready to go. On the GTS, you have Bill Stein's Damptronic system, which is their adjustable system. You can actually see uh, down in the back of the wheel well, it's a little dark back in there, uh, but there's actually uh, the remote reservoir 
right back down in there and it's got the braided steel line that goes on up to the shock absorber and that gives you a selectable choice between street mode or race mode when we go out for a drive you can actually go out we'll switch in between it's just a push button right on the dashboard yeah nice and easy um, and by default it's in street mode so it's in the more compliant setting um, but then you hit the the race mode and it's it's rock stiff it's really noticeable in fact the engineers on the car, they, they, they said, you know, there are so many cars out there that have a sport button or a race button or whatever button they call it from the manufacturer. You push it, it really doesn't do a whole lot. And they really wanted to make sure that when you pushed that button, you felt something happen. And you really do feel the difference uh, between that. So you'll, you guys will get a, get a chance to feel Are other settings uh, changed at the same time or is that specifically it, It's suspension? right on the suspension. Yep, okay. it's right on the suspension. So it's a shock, uh, shock uh, optimization mode, essentially. Now, differences in the electronics between the SRT and the GTS, the traction control is different as well. On that car, it's either on or off. It's two mode, you got it, you don't have it. Push the button. On the GTS, it runs four ways. By default, it's full on. Press the button, it turns it off. Uh, it's, uh, it's traction and stability reduced. Press it again, it's traction off, stability reduced. Press it, hold it for 10 seconds, and it's everything's off. Time to go call your Pirelli dealer tires. So that's kind of how that, that system works there. The difference too on the interiors between the SRT and the GTS. Uh, now this particular car we're looking at, this has the top of the line Laguna leather interior. Uh, and the color is called Sepia. The company that supplies the leather for this particular interior is an Italian company. It's the first time they've ever been in a production car. Their daily bread and butter, they actually make the uh, interior upholstery for private yachts and personal aircraft. So it's a pretty big deal that they've actually come on in and done our car. They've done some, apparently done some one-off uh, projects and things like that. But for us, it's, uh, it's a pretty big deal that they're in there. This one is actually the top of the line edition here, so huge it's a little short throw shifter. I mean, it's got it's got everything, all the bells and whistles. It's got SRT mode, I mean, it's got SRT performance space. Basically, like having an engineer, you know, in the car with you. I mean, it tells yeah, you nice. all, all your temperatures, your telemetries, your you know, suspension compression ratios, G-force, anything you need to know. Wow. 
like about this car. <laughs>
right, man. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Absolutely. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Appreciate it. No problem. For small academics. Let me see. You.